All right, welcome back to some of these Jamovi demos that I know you love so much. So we just have two more videos uh, for getting a handle on how to do the new tests that we've learned in class. Uh, those are correlation and regression analyses, the kinds of things that are super annoying uh, to do by hand especially. And so we're going to just go ahead and jump into those by using the software. So this video is going to be about using Jamovi to do correlation analyses. This is pretty straightforward just to test whether variables are related to one another. So I've loaded up Jamovi Demo 2. Dot CSV. If you need a reminder about how to load in data, go back to the first video in this series. But Jamovi Demo 2 has four variables. One is an ID number like before. So here in this case, we have 200 participants. Uh, these again are hypothetical data, but they sure seem uh, legitimate. So we have 200 uh, hypothetical people in this study who have values on three variables. One is the SAT score they got in high school when they took the SAT. Two is their college GPA, the GPA they had in college when they graduated. And then the final variable here is an IQ score based on some IQ test that they took. And we're curious about whether these three variables that relate to academic achievement and intelligence are related to one another. So we can use correlations as a first step to documenting whether these are related. So once these data have been loaded in, and you can see them all there in your window, we can go up to the regression tab now. Even though we're doing correlation, it's under the regression tab. Click on that and click correlation matrix because we want to find a set of correlations between these variables. What pops up is the window for choosing the variables we want to test correlations for. Uh, and so let's say to start, I want to know, does your high school SAT correlate with your college GPA? So I can move SAT over into the next window and I can move GPA over into the next window and automatically it starts to give us these results. So it creates a matrix, which is another way of saying a table where everything is on the left hand side and the upper side of the table. And it's just seeing at every intersection of those variables, what do the correlations look like? So here I have SAT and GPA. On the top, I also have SAT and GPA. And where those two intersect is the correlation. You'll notice that uh, some of these are blank because uh, SAT can't correlate with itself and GPA can't correlate with itself. So those are left blank. Uh, and then only half of the table is shown to you because the correlation between SAT and GPA is the same as between SAT and GPA. So to avoid the redundancy, it just shows it to you in one place. So here what we can see is that the R value is 0.378, so a reasonable correlation, a modest correlation between SAT and GPA, and the P value is less than 0 0.001. So since we have 200 people, we have good power, to remind you of statistical power, to find this correlation. So this correlation between SAT and GPA is statistically significant because that p-value is less than 0.05, which is the cutoff that we normally use. Uh, let's take a look at some of the options that we have here. So when we look at correlation coefficients, like with t-tests, there are various differences in how various tests test correlations. Pearson correlations are pretty standard, so we're just going to keep Pearson as our default correlation style. The other ones just do things a little bit differently. Our hypothesis uh, is related to them being correlated, which is the two-tailed hypothesis, versus being specifically positive or negative, which would be one-tailed hypotheses. Uh, and then our additional options here are one to report significance. If I turn that off, I don't get p-values anymore, so sometimes that's cool if all I want to know is the amount of correlation, but usually I want to test the significance, so I leave that on. The other handy thing that correlation matrices can do is if I click flag significant correlations you'll see that once I click on that it adds these little stars next to certain correlations so here 
I get three stars because it, my p-value is so far below 0.05. So at the note at the bottom of the table, it says that one star means that p is less than 0.05. Two stars means that p is less than 0.01. And three stars means that p is less than 0.001. So I can notice at a glance that this is significant without even looking at the exact p-value number. So you might want to keep that on. You might want to turn that off. That is fine, however you want to do it. You can, again, play around with any of the other settings. At the very minimum, though, this is pretty good at telling us what the correlations are. So the power of a correlation matrix is that I can test more than one correlation at a time. In this study, I have three variables that I think might be correlated with each other. So rather than do this three different times to test the possible associations, I'll go ahead and just scoot IQ, my third variable, also into this box. You'll see my table expanded, and now I've seen three possible correlations, all of which, you'll notice, are statistically significant. So we already saw that GPA and SAT, you look where they intersect at 0.378, a significant modest correlation. I can also test whether SAT and IQ are correlated. Those are also modestly significantly correlated at 0.293. So R is 0.293, P is less than 0 0.001. And then our third and final possible association also happens to be there where GPA and IQ are pretty highly correlated. Again, I, I don't know how true any of this is of the real world. I made up all of these numbers, but the results of this test would show us that for whatever reason, these three uh, variables are significantly correlated with one another. And that's it when it comes to a correlation matrix. So here we can see all the possible correlations. As before, I can copy this table by right clicking on it and choosing copy and then move that into a Word document if I chose, right? So here's how I could report the results of my correlations. And that does it for testing associations.